Hello and welcome to the C++11 Beginner Tutorials by gamer to creator I'm Chris. Now the first thing we're going to do in order to make our game is we're going to remove all the old code from the main function. And we're just going to leave the send.get that pauses the program and then the return statement that ends the program. So we're going to start basically fresh. Now we need to include these two headers. random and time.h. This is going to include code that allows us to get a random number from the computer. And then in order to get a truly random number, we need to give it a random seed. We're going to do that by getting the time. Since the time will change every time that you launch the program, it will seem like a truly random number even though if you were to give it the same seed it would produce the same strings of numbers. So we're going to call a function first from the random header called srand. This stands for seed random. But it needs a seed. It needs an integer value as you can see an unsigned int in order to be the seed and we're going to use the time and we're going to pass it a null zero so using this line we'll seed your random number generator this is technically two function calls and we'll get into functions later but just understand that this is seeding our random number generator now we're going to create a secret number and we're going to call rand, which stands for random, and it's a function call. We're going to use the modulus operator, 101. Now the random function obviously returns a random number, but it has a limitation. It only returns between 0 and rand max, which on most systems is about 35,000. 37,000, some, somewhere in there. Uh, actually, I could probably... And it's defi defined as hexadecimal. Anyway, it's going to be between 0 and rand max. Now, the modulus operator is the division operator that doesn't return the result of the division but returns the remainder if there was any left over. So if for instance we returned or the random number generator was 102 first to figure out in your mind what that would equal after the modulus operation you would do 102 divided by 101 which is 1 remainder of 1 so this equates to 1 and that would be our random number now if it was less than 101 then it would just return whatever you're dividing it by because that would be your remainder So effective, uh, excuse me, effectively what this does is takes the number between 0 and rand max and squeezes it between 0 and 100, which is exactly what we want for our game. Now, we're going to create the guess variable and we're going to assign it a negative 1. We're going to write our game loop. Well, secret number does not equal guess. I mean, and that's our game, right? That the game continues while the secret number has not been guessed. And that's how you would write that as a while loop. So every time that this while loop 
executes is basically a frame of our game. And we're going to first enter your guess. This is asking the user to enter his guess. We're going to stuff that what he enters into guess. And now that we have the guess and the secret number, we can count whether it is less than, more than, or whether he correctly guessed it. So here we have our three conditions. And this is how we output to the user the result of his guess. It was either less than, more than, or perfect. And because our condition for our while loop is while the secret number has not been guessed, or does not equal guess, once it does equal guess, once he has guessed it, in other words, it will exit the loop and hit the send.get line. So let's try it. So it's asking me for my first guess. I'm going to go smart and do 50. Your guess is more than the secret number, so I've effectively cut it in half. Let's cut it in half again. Now it's less. So it's got to be between 25 and 50. So let's say 40. Now it's more. Let's say 30. And now we're less. So it's between 30 and 40. Now it's more. And I guessed it. And the program exits. So that's our game. Now what we can do is we can stop the program right here and right here first we're going to see what secret number is we're gonna cheat so we know secret number equals 8 so we can play around with the numbers and make sure that we didn't introduce any bugs so let's say 10 Knowing that the secret number is 8, it should say that 10 is more. Now let's try 7. It is less, so so far we're correct. Let's try negative 23. We'll throw it a curveball. Still works. Let's try a number that's more than 100. And it still says that it's more. Now. We should probably give the user some more information to make this more clear on what the game rules are. So we'll tell them how to play the game. Try to guess the secret number between 0 and 100, and then it'll ask you to enter your guess. So doing this, we're going to play the game now. But we still have this breakpoint down here at the bottom. So let's do it smart. Cut it in half every time. Okay, it's less. 75. Uh, still less. Let's try 90. It's more. 80. 
Okay, I got it. Now we've paused right here and we can check to make sure secret number is 84 and guess is 84 as we can see down here in the locals. So our program appears to be working just right. Now I'm going to, in the description for this, include some homework. If you wish to do it, I suggest that you do. Um, I want you to keep track of how many guesses it took the user to get the proper number. And then, before the program exits, print that out so the user knows how many guesses it took and can try to beat his own score.